Yes. Okay, so finally, yes, we can continue. So, uh, yeah, just now the poll was on uh, the front end or back end or which framework you're using. So now maybe I'd like to find out whether does anybody know anything about uh, server-side rendering? No? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so, um, yeah, so don't worry. If you don't know, um, I'll explain more about what's the difference between server-side rendering, single-page applications, and also this thing called uh, static uh, websites. Uh, and okay, let's begin by uh, uh, letting you know what I'll go through today. I'll just give a short primer on Nux, very quick one. Uh, so the website serving, how do you do the difference between the SPA, SSR, as well as uh, static sites. And then some notes on the uh, static sites, and then the easy parts that uh, you will sail through very easily. Uh, the structure and life cycle of Nux, this is actually very important uh, when you are doing uh, programming for Nux. Uh, things that you can ignore when you are using uh, Generate. Okay? Because uh, there's certain things in Generate that are very particular to this that uh, uh, makes certain things in the NUX not, being, uh, not needed to be used. It sounds very confusing now, but you'll see later. Okay, then the settings for configuration of the generation. The last two parts are very important. Uh, no, the, last, the problem part is the most important part because it's the one that Actually, you can develop very fast in Nux, but once you hit some of these problems, uh, you actually spend a lot of time figuring out why the thing isn't working. When normal Vue.js, you use it, it works. Okay, so a very quick one. Nux is actually a framework for building Vue.js applications, um, very much similar to Next.js. Um, so basically, you need to use Vue.js. Uh, there's a very, uh, you write less boilerplate and there's a lot of uh, magic going on behind the scenes because all the routing is based on your, where you put the, where, how you name your files and which folder you put it in. The store modules are also uh, basically uh, magically sort of like uh, created uh, when you put something inside a store folder. Okay, it's uh, very easy to create a single page application or server-side render applications. There's a config where you just specify either SPA or universal mode. Um, and you also have uh, this thing called uh, generate, where it will generate uh, the static web pages. Okay, we'll uh, explain uh, more on the generated uh, websites later. So very uh, important uh, about SSR and Nux Generate. So SSR, you can have dynamic <coughs> content generated from the server. So what happens is that uh, you actually hit the server and then you can actually make use of the server-side information, uh, the information that the server receives, like the request header that, co that comes in, which contain things like uh, probably your browser um, lo um, locale and so on. Uh, and then you can use it for your front-end application. Uh, for Nux Generate, it's slightly, it's, it's, uh, slightly different. They also generate the content, but it's uh, generated only once. After that, there's no server at all, no, no server. Everything is all on the browser already. At least, I hope I'm correct on this. Yep. Okay, so now we come to uh, the comparison. So for SPS, you know, it's poor. Uh, for SEOs, um, because uh, the content that it shows is not very uh, English, uh, not very understanding. And it's also slow, especially if you have a bigger application, you have to load everything and it takes time. Even if you minify or do a lot of magic, it's still bigger than it is. You cannot fight the law of physics. The rest is actually very good because uh, deployment is very easy. You just throw it to a, a static content server. The scaling is very easy. Uh, yeah. And PWA also quite easy to do. So for server-side rendering, um, what SPA does poorly yet, server-side rendering does good at, uh, and then vice versa. So the problem with the server-side rendering is you need a server to actually serve those pages, and that requires you to have a Node a Express JS or a App Engine or something running. And um, do you want to scale in the cloud? You have to uh, spin up extra VMs or containers and so on. Um, 
Yeah, so the complexity of, there's also some complexity in server-side rendering because you need to know when the, the thing is rendered in the server and when the thing is rendered in the client. And if there's some mismatch, which I will show later, uh, very bad things can happen to your application. And the last one that we're going to go through uh, is the static sites. So this one has um, actually a lot of the um, positives um, and but there's only one part that is quite bad is that uh, if let's say you you have dynamic routes like uh, you have a slash uh, a username and then slash another username all these are dynamic because your database the users can be different if you directly go to the browser and type in the route plus slash that username you will end up uh, with a 404 error so this is uh, one of the drawbacks that uh, you mean to compromise or uh, Think of another way to how you, how to do things in order to gain the benefits and not uh, get the fall for or reduce the reduce the effect. Okay, yeah, so uh, so uh, the static site nodes again very important. There's no server site. It's similar to SPA. So it's just JS, HTML, CSS, and you load it to the the content server. Um, oh, just now I explained already. Yep. Okay, so I think I can skip this. Uh, yes, okay, I can skip this. Okay, so for the easy part, okay, yeah, to create uh, this uh, Nux uh, app, you just use the Nux create app, that's one way. All the structure is generated for you, and actually I um, would encourage to use this. Uh, but if you want, you can also use menu setup, uh, you install the Nux, and then you, you put at this folder called pages and so on uh, and then you learn actually uh, how the thing is uh, structured yeah but for quick start you can just uh, use Nux create app because there's a lot of options that you'll get you to choose whether you want to include like Axios um, what's, whether you want to include linting the server you want to serve whether it's uh, Express Koa or so on yep. uh, okay so after the setup, some of the useful libraries that I found um, uh, that we use on with Nux.js uh, includes the Axios for you to make a call to the backend, the up, uh, Nux.js Apollo also, it's a GraphQL client, uh, Nux.js.env where you can actually burn some of your config information onto the client side. Yes, so just have to be careful that uh, these things do not contain uh, contain sensitive information like your keys. It could contain your endpoints like where you want to call your API, but uh, not the, shouldn't put the keys inside. Okay, and then uh, the other one, very good, uh, Nux INTN for interna internationalization, and also Nux off used for authentication. They have a very good example on uh, local authentication as well as uh, those uh, callbacks O of to we call GitHub and then or Google. Yep, so those are the a quick uh, glance on the easy part. So for this um, Nux, what happens when you generate, uh, you get this uh, folder structure here on the left. Okay, um, the assets part uh, where you're like uh, images, you can put in images and all these images inside the assets, they'll actually be minified and so on. But if you do not want those things to be minified, or you put it actually in the static, the static folder. Okay, the store is where you actually uh, put your put your the Vuex store. So if it's index.js inside there, it's the main store. And if you call it abc.js, it's actually a module name. Uh, you actually separate the, the, the store so that uh, it's better organized. Yeah, the store name abc.js. Yeah, and you just need to create file name. You don't need to do any other configuration or so on. Um, okay, so. Pages is where you actually structure the website, the routes. Um, middleware, yes. So middleware is uh, actually this one where they, um, they will call the middleware and then they'll do something before they render the pages. Yep. So which brings me to the Nux lifecycle, which is uh, very important. Okay, so the incoming request is actually basically your, the HTTP request to the page. And then you'll call this Nux server in it, which uh, will get all the information for your store. This is still at the server side. And then uh, this uh, middleware uh, will also be called. 
Um, this one, uh, then followed by your pages. And then, um, oh sorry, this validate, wait, this one, I have to read what is it. So, okay, ignore this, yeah. So, async data and fetch is for you to fetch your data like from uh, other sources uh, before you actually uh, render it into the page. So, you can imagine this, like instead of a JavaScript, you, you run a PHP application. So, you go to the PHP, like abc.php, and then PHP will go and do all the fetching on the back end, everything, they will form everything up, and then they will spit it out. So, this is basically what it is. Yep. So it's like going regressing, but actually it's not. Yeah. So what you can uh, ignore for Nux generate, uh, because uh, generate only run once, so some of the things are actually pretty useless, like a Nux server in it, async data and fetch. You will actually do your calls in like the created or the mounted hook, as usual. Yep. Then uh, there's no server middleware, so there's this thing called uh, server middleware inside, which actually. Uh, instead of running Express, you can have this thing inside there uh, to do some calls or whatever uh, server middleware that things that you need to do. Uh, you don't need that because it's non-existent. No SSR, this tag, uh, where you want, you do want a block inside the no SSR to render in the server. This is also useless because there's no server. And uh, basically, plugins that, uh, that uh, can't handle SSR because they, are, uh, they use like things like the window object, which are all in the front end, you don't have to worry about it already. Okay, so the other thing you need to know is the, in the view life cycle, uh, only the before create and created hooks are called in both the client and the server side. So the server side, only the created hook and the before created are called. The other hooks, mounted, destroy, they are all on the, on the browser side. Yes. And then the last thing, the middleware that you saw actually inside the loop, actually is also uh, pretty useless because this thing will not be at the, at the, at the browser side. Uh, you only have to use this. And this one, you myself put it inside the created or the mounted hook. Yep. Okay, now we come to uh, the configuration of uh, Nux Generate. So basically the important one Actually, um, okay, not yeah. It's a uh, where you want to uh, generate the file, so you just specify a, a directory. Uh, the dev tools through means uh, you can use the view dev tools with the static generated website because if you put that as false, and you generate, you will not be able to see your like view state in the dev tools. Uh, the one on top where the routes is more important because this one you can specify which are the routes that you want to. Uh, generate. So, like for dynamic routes, what happens is that this one will call uh, API. It hasn't generated yet. You'll call API to list all the users. So, if you're like 1 million users <laughs> and there's no limit, you will generate 1 million uh, different static uh, HTML files and that one, uh, yeah, you have problem. Yeah. So, this one you have to be careful when you use Okay, so that doesn't mean it cannot handle the dynamic routing. Yeah. It's just that when you key in that dynamic route directly in the browser and you press enter, you get the 404. Yep. Okay, so far, uh, everything okay? Okay, not too fast, not too slow. Okay, so um, now we come to problems. Okay, basically there are SSR problems. These are actually inherent with uh, server-side rendering. Uh, so there is no window in the server, so if you use something that has a window inside, uh, you can, uh, yeah, you just see some uh, ugly screen on your browser. And hydration failure is also similar, I will go through it. Uh, the other one is uh, FML problems, okay. These are unique problems that will slow down your development. Like, uh, later I'll show you this uh, Vuex mod modules. You actually can dynamically create it in a normal Vue.js and it works. But when it comes to the Nux.js and it, you do this, it doesn't work. And then you have to dig in and find out why it doesn't work. So this, uh, yeah, sometimes it might take, if you're lucky, maybe a few minutes, you know, hours or not days. Yeah, and then inherent problems, 
which uh, sometimes you cannot uh, fix it, but thank goodness they are fixed. Okay, so the first problem, no window in server. So what happens is that you have this sample where you add a event listener click. So when you visit this page, you, anything you click, uh, something will pop up. Okay, but what happens is that when you call the created hook, uh, in the, in the, okay, this process client means on the browser side. So actually, when you're inside the server side and you're rendering, you try to uh, generate this, but there's no window object. So uh, when you go to the page and then you, okay, when you navigate to the page, it will be okay, but when you type on the, on the, on the, oh, finishing already, yeah. Oh, shh. Okay. okay. Okay, when you type on a page, right, it will just crash. Okay, that's what I will. Yeah, we have to go through the problems, you know, because these are the ones that people pull their hair out. Okay, so the other one is uh, yeah, hydration failure. Okay, so what happens is that the, the DOM on the client side doesn't match on the server side. So you can see this DOM, there's a date picker here. There's a date picker here. But this date picker is uh, loaded only inside the browser. Okay. So when you gen when the the SSR try to serve the page, uh, you will get a warning or something that uh, that uh, this component is not is not yeah this component is not found because it's not there. So you might get run into problems because of this. So you need to take note. Yes. Uh, okay. Sorry. So how do I, do you fix that? So you can actually wrap between this thing called. Uh, the no SSR tag. So this no SSR tag will tell them that uh, not to render it in the server side. Or you can move the DOM manipulation to the mounted hook, which is available inside the browser. Okay, next one. Ah, gosh, okay, this one is very easy. So uh, by right, this store register module for Vuex store should work normally, but it doesn't because the state gets wiped out. I don't know why. I have no answer still. But what happened is that I just create back the state and then it works after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was working on this problem for about two, uh, one day. So I will ask them next time. Okay. So the other one, uh, these problems happened before NUX2 in that just this thing takes three seconds to load. So imagine you have a lot of requests coming in. Bye bye. So yeah, they fixed it in NUX2. Yeah, this one, you, if you want to fix it, you really have to dig in. So uh, the other one is that the server responds very slowly after a lot of uh, connections. So, so fixed in NUX too. So fortunately, they have been fixed. Otherwise, yeah, it will be a showstopper if you want to deploy production. Okay, I think maybe the important thing will be the references. Uh, I think all this will be available uh, on the site. We'll make it available. And thank you everybody for the talk. Uh, so, yeah, this is the place I work at. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes. Uh. <laughs>